Hello everyone, I am Kim Cohen, client partner with Semnox Americas. It was great and very insightful speaking with our client Mike Epicasis, CEO and owner of GameTime, this past weekend. Well, I have divided our conversation into two separate parts. In the first part here, let's see what Mike has to say about reopening during COVID. Thank you for watching. Hello, today we are speaking with Mike Epicasis, owner and CEO of GameTime. Uh, in 2010, he acquired GameWorks from both Miami and Tampa and rebranded them as GameTime. That proved to be so successful that he opened four more locations in Florida, and now he has two more underway. Thank you, Mike, for joining us today. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Oh, wonderful. Okay, I guess we can just dive right in, and I guess my first question for you would be, how long have you guys been reopened, and what kind of major changes did you have to make? Uh, so we've been reopened for um, two months yesterday um, for oh, five, five of our six locations. We did open them all six at once. Our Miami location had been mandated to shut back down. Um, the uh, the mayor of the county had shut things down to retrench a little bit as the COVID numbers had spiked. Hopefully we'll get to open that up again soon. Yes, hopefully that's great. So what kind of major changes did you have to make in your locations? Um, so I, I think it's probably pretty common to what everybody has seen out there. Um, everything from trying to figure out what the CDC guidelines actually are to what the mm -hmm. local authorities want. Um, everything from sanitizer everywhere to gloves offered, cleaning down games more often, social distancing, graphics and stickers, uh, mask requirements, all of those standard things. Uh, I think a lot of them were probably preemptive and were probably more to make the um, local authorities happy. I think mm -hmm. people um people naturally came in and knew that they wanted a social distance so stickers on the floors um whether they were needed or not i i could make the argument in either direction but ultimately we complied with all of the things that they wanted which made good sense um i certainly don't see anybody using them as a as a point of reference um but we did all of the we did all of those things um, <laughs> operationally we we changed some some things back a house uh, we're full full service food and bar um, so the uh, back of house staff had some things changed, which are similar to what we knew as regular CDC guidelines. Um, we're requiring glove changes more often than what typical food um, requirements are. Mm -hmm. um, we've got extra sanitizer buckets out. We've got um, different food handling for how food goes out versus your server that um, would normally handle your food. We may have put a food runner in, so there's less contact point. Um, so we've made some of those changes. Um, again, most of them were pretty broad for whatever CDC guidelines or local authorities said. Um, and unfortunately, it's a moving target, right? And it, it seems that every single day we hear something new, whether it's now surface contact um, transmissional is not really existent, then it doesn't matter. But guests still want to see you see see things wiping that being wiped down, um, mm -hmm. or they they say that and then they come back and go, just kidding. It, apparently, it does matter. And so we're 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 being over cautious um, in every yeah. if, if there's something that we had deployed as a matter of, of being cautious, even if we're told that right now it might not matter, we haven't pulled back any of those things yet. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. What challenges have you had? Um, so you know, challenges have been interesting. Um, they're they're certainly um, they certainly come hour by hour. <laughs> they 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 haven't been like li list out the challenges, come up with solutions, and go your way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's interesting that every time the phone rings or every time something comes up, um, it's really a, a new question or new challenge. So the single biggest challenge has, has been, um, you know, guest behavior. And and I don't mean in, okay. in how they're behaving in the building. It's been um, what they're willing to do, what they're not willing to do um, and, and, and so on. So from a team member perspective, um, there was certainly some discomfort in returning to work and some people mm -hmm. that were very comfortable and some people that were not comfortable at all and the hard balance is really getting the people that are very comfortable to be conscious of the people around them that are not comfortable right because if you're not comfortable yeah. you want a mask and you want gloves that's great but if the person next to you doesn't really feel like they should wear a mask convincing them and getting them to all buy in has been been internally challenging um but we've been pretty strict on it so for somebody that doesn't necessarily feel that there's a concern and, and they want to be a little free with their mask. They they've been told that they can go on a new interview or they can return when um, when things have returned to normal. So it, okay. you know, yeah, we've 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 made those decisions very rapidly and just felt that we weren't going to deal with internal confrontation over following rules and guidelines that have been put in place. 
Um, on the guest behavior side, it's been, again, the two extremes. You don't have anybody in the middle that is just willing to come in and enjoy the venue but follow the rules. Either they're completely terrified and they want sanitizer on every single machine and they want to wear the plastic gloves and they can't even believe that people eat without their masks on, which I'm not really sure how to accomplish How's that. that happen? <laughs> right, you just, you, like yeah. the, uh, that further extreme. And then you have the people that come in and, and, and want to get loud and talk about how it's their constitutional right to enter the building. Um, well, you know, no, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no entry kind of, you, you can you can add that to it. I'm not really sure yeah. that the founding fathers had looked at it and said, well, constitutionally, we want to make sure that the mask rules are protected. Um, so it, it's it's mm -hmm. that furthest extreme. So consumer behavior um, has been the, the biggest challenge because finding a middle ground isn't even what you're trying to do today, right? You're, you're going to follow the rules because mm -hmm. those are the rules and, and it's, it's the best information we have. So middle ground isn't what we're looking for. We're looking for compliance and that, that's been the biggest challenge. So a lot of pushback then from some people. Um, yeah, so very few people. So it's it's not even really We're the good. rule. It's probably the 99-1 rule. So 99% of people are nervous and conscious and want to do the right thing. And then 1% want to come in and, and want to be political activists and just, you know, could confront as if it's a public space and they have the right to be there and they don't have to follow any rules. And unfortunately, now it's not the time for those battles. No, it's not the time for those battles.